So now we're live. Welcome to Frostma Friday Espresso Chat. My name is Maya Erkeki. I have some really, really interesting guests today. We're going to be talking about personalization use cases to improve customer experience. So a couple words about Frostma. We are a personalization software company. Uh, there are many different use cases for personalization. And, and today we're sort of focusing on, on customer experience and, and different ways of improving that. And I uh, allowing my guests to introduce themselves. So Aino, go ahead. Yeah, hi all. I'm Aino uh, and I work in Karuna as a head of marketing and digital customer experience. And what I actually do is that in addition to marketing, I'm also responsible of, of develop, developing the customer journey mapping and so say easiest possible service experience in our digital services. And I'm doing this uh, together with my own team. And then we have also great online development team in Karuna. All right, thank you. And now Thomas. You're hey, part of good that. Good afternoon. Yes, we're a part of the partners. So yeah. I'm representing uh, Dentsu. Um, I work with uh, CRO, which is conversion rate optimization. Uh, I've been at uh, Dentsu for two and a half years, um, mostly focusing on improving digital customer experience in, in all ways. Um, so combining a bit technical things with uh, web analytics and those uh, kind of tasks for, for different clients. And uh, myself, I have a bit of a technical background, so uh, both as a web designer and, and developer, but also been working with UX and uh, I'm hoping for a good discussion today. So, hey, everyone. Excellent, and, and thank you. I, I think we have a lot of interesting topics to discuss. A few words about the format. So any live viewers, you can uh, submit your questions. If the time allows, we'll be answering those, but uh, if for some reason we don't have a chance to answer them, uh, we'll then come back to you afterwards. And then obviously there's always the question about the recording, given that everything works, the recording will be available afterwards. So you can then come back to your, your favorite topics. Uh, but as first thing, um, maybe not everybody knows what Karuna is doing. So Aino, can you tell a little bit about Karuna's business? Yeah, sure. Uh, we are one of the electricity uh, distributors in Finland. There's uh, altogether over 70 distributors in Finland, and we are one of them. And our job is to maintain, repair, and build uh, weatherproof electricity network for our customers. And we have over 700,000 customers uh, in, in Finland, and we uh, our electricity network is in parts of uh, South, Southwest and West Finland and also in Joensuu, Koilisma and Satakunta. Uh, and the nature of the customer relationship between us and the customer is that uh, the customers come automatically our customers uh, once they move to our electricity network area. Excellent. Thank you. And definitely super critical, critical business for all of us, because we would be yeah. lost very soon without, without any electricity distributor. But, but yeah. maybe not the first one uh, when you think about a digital experience and, mm -hmm. and the digital services. So um, can you tell a little bit on like what's the background, what's going on with your digital experience and, and how are your customers really using the digital services? Yeah, uh, well, because of the nature of our p business, uh, our customers need our digital services quite, quite rarely. Uh, but when they need them, the main points or the touch points when we meet the customers are, for example, a storm coming up, or they have faced a power cut, or they need to ask about the invoicing, or they are building a new house and need to order, for example, electricity connection from us. And as you probably uh, already think uh, these are not always the most positive things to be in contact with us or they are quite um, not so easy to understand for example electricity connection you probably order it once in a lifetime so it's mm -hmm. a once in a lifetime experience for the customer also uh, so this means that the basic uh, expectation uh, towards our digital services is to get easy as possible ser service and, and fast service um, and we have built and, and developed our digital services within the last years uh, to meet our customers' 
needs uh, and and we have done a lot really 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 lot uh, and and quite in a short time period um, but where we haven't been that good is uh, systematic measuring of the online services and, and systematic utilization of the data in our digital development. So in that, that area, we are a fairly, fairly young company. And um, we can say that uh, all the work around the customer behavior data has started uh, less than two years ago. Uh, and where we started, we started really from the basics. Uh, first, we identified the basic customer journeys in our digital services, uh, added event points and meters, and then started to gather the data and then uh, finally understand the possible pain points where we should improve the online experience for our customers. And in the early of the beginning, we started the co cooperation with dental experts to help us to do this all. Excellent. Uh, that's that's really critical to sort of get started somewhere. And I, I think a lot of organizations want to be data driven. Yeah. Um, so too much when you kind of got the assignment that, OK, now we want to utilize our data better. Uh, how did you get started and, and what's your advice if, if somebody wants to be data driven on the customer experience and digital services side? Right. So as, um, you know, Aino said as well, I mean, there's a lot of data you can handle and so on. And especially, you know, with uh, the networks and the electricity, there, there was a lot of offline data. But what we tried to do was to kind of map all the online data that we had and, you know, setting up all of the trackings throughout the digital services. Uh, on, on Karuna's site, for example. So we started with, you know, defining all the data layer, you know, events and things that we would be following on the customer journey of all, all the users to really kind of understand how they behave and what they do and, and kind of um, as well, you know, understand their intentions, you know, how they're um, entering the site and they're, you know, searching for certain keywords and how they end up, you know, uh, and, and uh, on the site and how, how Karuna can help them on the way. Um, and we, what we quite fast notice is that, uh, you know, there's a lot of things that we can optimize under their journey. So, you know, they have spe specific intentions that they want to achieve and we can help them with those things, you know, whether it's, you know, looking for contact information or it's, you know, updating their own information on their, you know, account and, and pay, a, pay an invoice, for example. So, you know, looking at these things, but um, we uh, also use, of course, um, started using this, uh, for example, heat mapping tools and, and session recordings to understand um, perhaps like uh, things that could be improved, you know, uh, obstacles for, for the users. Um, and then um, as a continuation on that, we, we started doing A-B testing, which has been a great tool for us to kind of try to improve things incrementally on the way uh, of, of users' journeys and, you know, through data, you know, make decisions as well, kind of in, in alignment with uh, product development and, and, and all the things that uh, Karan already is doing, uh, doing and, and uh, you know, developing on, the, on their services. Excellent. And I, what I really like about your approach is this uh, continuous improvement. So all the time identifying the little steps towards the bigger goals and, and kind of making sure that there is this continuous movement toward the, the right direction. And so eventually on, on your journey, you have this point that, okay, now it's good time to think about personalization. And, and I know what was the trigger or the data point that actually made you think that, okay, now uh, personalization might be a method on our journey that we'd like to use. Uh, well, as the understanding of how the customers use our digital services increased, uh, once we have the, had the data and we could understand it better, uh, we noticed, noticed that there are quite much we can do to balance the customer contacts between the phone service and also in the, in the digital channels. Uh, so we wanted to give customers uh, better knowledge, for example, um, in situations where the storm is coming or the power cut is on, uh, and we wanted to uh, guide them to find the information straight from the website. So, so ne no need for calling us. They just can find the, the information fast and, and easily from the website. Um, and before the personalization, uh, this all was done manually. So, for example, when the storm came up, we had, had to do manually some banner to the website and then guide to be, 
uh, customers through the website. Uh, and as we know, that's not the best uh, way to uh, manage the site because manually done on weekends or on Christmas Eve or yeah, whatever. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We we cannot cannot ask ask a storm. They are just coming when they want to come. So, yeah. So so this was the point when we started to think uh, what the possible possibilities we can do to optimize the web content and, and and that was actually the idea where to start to test the personalization and how it can help us to to um, like make the website better for our customers yeah excellent i think those are good starting points so serving visitors in different situations and and adding the level of uh, automation are, are all yeah. great starting points and I would say from Frostmo's perspective, the biggest um, challenge that a lot of our clients have is that where do I start? Because personalization is a big concept. Uh, there are so many different areas that you can work on and you can achieve improvements, but really nailing it down that, okay, this is my balanced set of use cases is, is often the most sort of difficult step. So Thomas, how, how did you identify the first use cases for personalization and, and what were they? Right. So as, as Anna said, we know kind of already about, so when we had data on where, where the challenges are for the users, but we defined three different segments, sorry, personalization cases that I actually could show you on my, my screen. Um, so uh, the first one um, was a rule-based uh, personalization. So that means that, you know, we specified a segment of users that went to certain pages and came back. Uh, so we had specified rules on, um, you know, how to change the front page uh, according to their um, behavior on the site. So that's one of the ways we, we use personalization in this case. So basically um, looking at how, how people or, or the users were using the site and then, uh, you know, um, configuring segments based on that. Um, then another test that we had was based on algorithms. So um, we had a content recommendation engine here on the uh, on, on content pages where we lifted up uh, both content that was uh, previously viewed by the user, but also um, things that other people are viewing. So we had had, had you know Frostmo's algorithm in, in in behind the scenes to to provide uh, users with relevant content, and it was uh, placed like uh, uh, on a, on a, in a box on on the. Uh, right side of the, the, the page. So that, that was a second use case. And then uh, the um, third uh, use case was uh, actually based on the user's location and also um, APIs uh, through uh, weather data. So, uh, so we knew, for example, that users in a specific area, if they're facing a, a storm, we would automatically show them uh, things on the front page to kind of, you know, explain that, okay, are you in, in challenges? You can't, you know, don't you have electricity? Uh, can we help you? So basically, uh, you had three different approaches out of which one is uh, going through rules. One is, you know, uh, things happening behind the scene and algorithms, and then you had uh, location and actually APIs connected to, to uh, one of the use cases. So uh, these were the three we tried out with uh, Frostmo. Excellent, thank you. And, and I think that's great advice for anyone thinking of their use cases is making sure that there are balance, that they are different types. So here is the rule-based, something that's algorithm-based, always dynamic. And then uh, sort of based on like a third party data. So we had weather, weather data and, and location data. And I have to say that this was the first time when we were like scoping the proof of concept. Of, so the requirement that Aino gave us that was that, okay, I'd like the proof of concept to be long enough that there is at least one big storm during the proof of concept. And we were like, hmm, okay. <laughs> so how do we how define we predict that? that? <laughs> yeah, how do we predict that? But luckily but we had happened. the norm. <laughs> We yeah. Well, storm. yeah, the POC was in the period that that there's there is a time where the storms come. So, so yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, so so that's a good advice. How about then um, in in terms of the the results when you had these different use cases? What what did the results look like? Can we get them visible on the screen, or will you want to tell a little bit about the results? Yeah, I can tell, and then then uh, Thomas can show the the actual yeah, numbers yeah. behind mm -hmm. it. Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. Well, gladly we had the storm during during the <laughs> POC, so we were able to test all the use cases. Uh, and within the storms, we managed to guide the customers through online services to find the information they needed better than mm -hmm. before. And also, the content recommendations worked really well. Uh, and 
people clearly appreciate the suggested shortcuts, so to say, what we can offer in the in the websites. Um, but what was also important to find out was that we noticed really fast what to improve for future. And for example, how to develop the use of the weather data further in our, our use cases, how we can identify uh, the need of the customer when they come to the site. So, so I think that was a really good uh, like finding during the POC that, that where we can still improve. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, excellent. And and maybe one thing I, I want to highlight from the content recommendations, which often surprises our clients, is that how often people actually want to come back to the content they've read earlier. So so the click-through rate of that, this is what you last read, it, it always comes as a surprise. And same thing applies to e-commerce as well, that people actually want to pick up where they left off and continue from there. Uh, from the same sort of product or, or piece of content. Yeah, and that surprised me too. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. It, 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 it happens so often that it shouldn't surprise us anymore. But, but still, still yeah. something, what, what I think everybody, when you think about the user experience, you might want to think that there are interruptions all the time or you need to go online, check something else and then come back. And just like picking up where you left off, it, it's sort of making the journey smooth and, and friction free. Uh, how about Thomas, from your perspective, the results? How right, I could them? actually show show you the conversion rate for yeah, these three yeah. tests that we had. So uh, for the rule based test, we had a conversion rate on on two percent. So obviously, when you think about the front page, there's a lot of different elements you can click on. So um, you know, we can still see that people are you know evoked by the the things we propose on the front page, and especially like in the hero image. Uh, but then when you go to something that's a bit more, I would say, personalized, even though the first one is personalized as well. But the second one, you could see that, you know, people are interested in the content that we provide to them. So the, the content uh, that's rec recommended for them is something that they, they, uh, they're they interested in. And then if you see uh, on, on the third case where you actually see a desktop almost 12% and 20% on mobile, you could see that um, this level of personalization that we have here has an impact on how much uh, people are converting. So, you know, in, in a way, if you, you know, like to simplify it, you could say that the more personalized the, you know, test is, the more, uh, the, the higher the conversion rate is. So, you know, that's something you need, need to keep in mind when, when doing these segmentations as well and kind of thinking about the different segments. Um, obviously, these are, you, you can't really compare these in a way because they're, you know, on different pages and they're different, you know, they, they say different things, but still, you know, something for us to think about. And, and I think it works as a pretty good baseline as well when we start to further develop and use these segments in the future through, through Fosmo or got on our site. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and definitely also A-B testing as part of, so for the content recommendation, there were a couple tests if the recommended content should be visible right away or if it should be available through a click. Right. click. So so all of that, uh, I think, making the every, every single step toward the, the end goal, so small improvements all the time is, is really important. So we had, when we were preparing for this discussion, sort of uh, long talks about what were the key findings and how we thought of the results. I, I know, what are your comments on that, the findings and results? Yeah, well, or yeah, I would say that there's like four points uh, to go through. So uh, I would say that be keen to test new things uh, and, and to start boldly to do, do that. Uh, but of course, you have to identify the need uh, or what you want to achieve first. So what you want to achieve and then start testing uh, and, 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 and then um, analyze the results and, and of course improve. So on the way, all the time, analyze and improve. And, and of course, uh, kill to idea if it doesn't work. <laughs> that's, that's also good to, good to remember. I would be a good one to have on the list. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, and last, of course, uh, well, I find good partners for sparring. Uh, I think, for example, in our, our case, uh, we didn't know how to do it ourselves, uh, but we, we did uh, know what we want to achieve and we had the vision what we want to do. So, so that's important. You are the best expert of your own business. So, so you have to know 
what you want to achieve and what is the vision you want to want to go. Uh, but but you don't have to do it uh, yourself. So if you have a good partners, you find good partners. Just ask their expertise to do do it. Uh, and where they can help you. So as we had uh, Frostman Dance with us to, to um, have this, this kind of test and, and we find really good results on it. Hmm. Excellent, those, those are great findings. And, and I think it's a good point what you said that, you know, if it doesn't work, stop it. And there's always, there are tests that do fail and, and that's yeah. like part of it. Yeah. And then you just go on and learn from it. Yeah, I yeah. And, and I think that's important. a good thing that, that just keep keep testing, but understand when to stop and try mm -hmm. something new. Mm -hmm. Yeah, very good. How about Thomas from your point of view? Well, I'd like to raise four different things, perhaps. Yeah. Well, one is obviously um, the specifying the segments that you personalize for. Mm -hmm. So uh, mm -hmm. there's a lot of planning involved. So I mean, the technical work isn't really that huge. I mean, it's just code. But basically, you, as uh, I mentioned as well, you need to understand what the challenges are, what, what the users mm -hmm. really need, what mm -hmm. you, how you can help them, and so on. So you know, specifying the segments uh, that make sense and you know, trying with them. Um, then, of course, I mean, when doing both personalization and A-B testing, it's important to kind of not make too many changes at once just to, yeah. you, you, for you to know really what impacts what they, and, yeah. and also kind of related to that, perhaps have very strict KPIs as well that you follow. So what, what are you trying to improve and so on? Um, and then, of course, um, I think understanding your customer is, is more of a mindset that I would say. So, you know, being there and trying to, to solve issues and, and, you know, really asking them, what, how can we help you? And, you know, what are your challenges? Because, you know, you kind of get blind to that when you're, you're falling in love with your product and you're really so much involved. So you, you can't see outside that you're, you're bubble, if I, if I might say like that, but still, you know, having that mindset is, is crucial. And then, um, as you say as well about learnings, you know, um, don't be afraid of failing. I think that's super important. That, you know, uh, don't you know, just just keep on going and 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 fi figure out new ways to to improve and and so on. So that's maybe my fourth point here. Mm -hmm. Great points, and uh, even though in in most most organizations it's not like failure failure is something to learn from but not everybody have this systematic process of of learning from failures so i think it's it's really and it's a great principle that can be applied for any anything life in general i would say okay. hey uh we are pretty much running out of time so i think it's time to sort of move on to our i know final words and um obviously you can reach us reach us if you have more questions but in terms of like like final words, I uh, I was actually initially planning on saying that you know this this is a way uh, how marketers can save time. You don't need to wake up in the middle of the night thinking, oh, I forgot to update something. <laughs> it's always up to date, saving time. But maybe as as actually final word, also want to highlight that that when you pick your first personalization use case, make sure that you have that balance. I think. I think there was a really nice balance between the use cases. Three is a good number, but make sure that you have something rule-based, something personalization-based, carefully selected segments, and then utilizing some, some third-party data is, is also, also a good thing. How about Aino? Key final words for our audience. Well, just, just one thing. So if you are wondering how to boost your customer's experience on your website, so uh, within these results, I can say that I'm, I can warmly recommend personalization to do it. Just, just try it, how it works. Thank you. Great. How about Thomas? Well, I would say that, you know, when I worked with a lot of clients, you know, I can, I can trust, trustly say that um, it, uh, testing and personalization works for any industry. So, you know, whether you're B2B or you're with customers directly with C, B2C, uh, it really doesn't matter. You know, uh, any business can benefit of, of testing out new things and, you know, being lean and trying to understand, you know, user needs and such things better. So, um, you know, just go out there, you know, don't be afraid. Excellent. Thank you. Uh, we are exactly on time and actually out of time. For any questions, uh, we'll come back to the audience afterwards. Um, really special thanks, Aino, Thomas. It's been really nice working with you. This was super interesting. I learned a lot and I think our audience learned a lot as well. So thanks so much and have a great rest of the day. Thank you. Thanks so much.